So as you can probably tell, I'm back in Thailand now. I want to explain why I suddenly and very impulsively decided to leave Japan and come back to Thailand. There's basically one very important reason why. The audio is not going to be very good for today because my microphone has broken. The little USB port thing is loose and it doesn't connect. Anyway, if you remember my last live stream, I was complaining about how my Thai girlfriend was not replying to my messages. And the reason why she wasn't replying to me and actually blocked me was because she kind of found out my YouTube channel. Somehow she found my YouTube channel and she also found out that I was secretly living with a Korean woman. And obviously, as you could tell, she wasn't very happy about that and she was about to break up with me. I waited about four days for her to reply to me, but she just wasn't replying. So I used Skype to phone her phone number and she picked up and she explained to me what had happened and why she was not replying to me and basically said to me that if I don't don't leave the Korean woman's house straight away, then the relationship should be considered to be over. So I had to decide pretty quickly if I wanted to stay in Japan and lose the relationship or come back to Thailand and save it. It wasn't really a difficult decision because I wasn't really attracted to the Korean woman at all in any way and I was just living there because I wanted a free place to live. I also felt kind of bored in Japan after weeks and weeks and weeks of endlessly cycling around in circles and just basically doing nothing and also having to pay thousands of dollars for hotels and living expenses just so I wasn't homeless. That wasn't very appealing to me and I was kind of fed up after a month and a bit of doing that. And to be honest, the whole thing's been kind of confusing to me as well because I thought I felt so desperate to get back to Japan and live in Japan again after three years of being locked out of the country because of you know what and the lockdowns and restrictions and stuff like that. When Japan finally reopened, I thought to myself, Oh my god, Japan has reopened, I'm stuck in Thailand, I can't get back to Japan. And I felt kind of miserable thinking that I'm going to be happier when I get back to Japan. So I go back to Japan, live there for like a month and realize, wait, I'm not actually happier in Japan anymore. But now that I've been to Japan and I've realized that without the excitement of a growing YouTube channel and the excitement of all the marriage drama and stuff like that that happened back in 2018 and 19, just by going back to Japan and being in Japan again, it's not really going to recreate those moments again. It's not going to be the same. Sure, the place is the same and Japan is basically the same as it was back then, but Things have changed. Time has moved on. People have moved on. I've changed as well as a person. And no matter what I do or hope or wish for, 2018 and 2019 is never coming back. And I need to accept that and move on. It's been a sombering experience going back to Japan and having nothing interesting or exciting happen in relation to 2018 or 19. It's like I just went there and then left and nothing happened. And I don't really know what I was expecting by going back to Japan. Obviously, I wasn't deluded enough into thinking that, you know, everything's just going to return to back how it was back in 2019 or 2020 after I left Japan. But in the back of my mind, at the bottom of my heart, I felt like something could happen. It was pretty awkward staying at the Korean woman's house after I had decided in my heart to go back to Thailand because I had to create this plan how I'm going to escape the Korean woman's house. And this is how I did it. So it's, it's a pretty dick move, I guess you could say. But when she was in the shower, I quickly packed all my stuff into my bag and snuck out and then rode my bicycle as quickly as I possibly could, as far away as I possibly could from the Korean woman's apartment. And then I rode my bike to the airport, which took nearly five hours. I booked the earliest flight I could find back to Thailand and it was in the middle of the night and I arrived in Bangkok at 4 a.m. in the morning. It was a pretty uncomfortable flight and I actually got in trouble with immigration because it's now my third time I think coming back to Thailand after only being out of the country for less than a few months and they questioned me I got taken over to the detention center it was very scary they asked me where's my return ticket and I said I didn't buy my return ticket yet and then they started asking me a lot of questions like why do you keep coming back to Thailand what do you do in Thailand? So I told them that I live with my girlfriend and we travel around Thailand every week. And they said to me, you're not traveling, you're just living with your girlfriend and next time you need to have a visa. I thought they were gonna not let me, I thought they were going to deny me entry into the country. I was really scared, but they were nice and they gave me a warning that they let me in this time. So I can't stay in Thailand very long this time. And next time I want to come to Thailand, I really need to get a visa. I don't know what kind of visa to get. I could get a student visa, I need to go to a language school, or I could get a marriage visa, or I can get a Thai elite visa, which costs 
fourteen thousand pounds for a five-year visa which i am seriously thinking of buying now i really don't know where to go after i have to leave thailand this time i'm thinking of Maybe I could bring my girlfriend with me back home to the UK whilst I apply for a visa in the UK. Or I could try getting an education visa whilst I'm in Thailand and then convert to an education visa whilst being here. Or maybe I could go to Korea for a bit or maybe to Malaysia. I don't think I can go back to Japan again so soon because I've just left. If I try going back to Japan again, they'll be like, didn't you just leave while you're here again and then I have to explain to them they might deny me entry into Japan which would be very scary and to be honest I'm getting really sick and tired and fed up of living like this this lifestyle is exhausting it's expensive it's annoying I actually hate traveling as someone who travels a lot I don't like traveling I hate flying I hate hopping around from hotel to hotel I want to stay put in one place for at least a few months or half a year and I feel like I'm getting too old for this I don't want to be a backpacker for the rest of my life I want to eventually choose a country and settle down and I feel like Thailand is not a bad country to choose to settle down in the backpacker lifestyle is just not really appealing to me anymore so yeah I need to do a lot of thinking about my future and how can I stay here long term with a visa and what kind of visa to get and what I want to do with my life from now on that now that I don't really care about living in Japan anymore, I feel like my obsession with living in Japan is kind of over again and I don't really feel like I'm gonna be happy just by being in Japan. Hello, welcome back to a new episode of Cooking with Daniel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the perfect crispy fried chicken using an air fryer eggs, flour, and breadcrumbs. So this is quite a messy and complicated, well not complicated, it's just there's quite a few steps in making this dish. So you need to be organized. You need two plates and a bowl. You'll need a nice bowl to mix the egg in and you also need to have a wide big plate so you can place the bits of chicken into it to rub all the flour. Now you can use any kind of chicken you want. It could be breast, could be wings or legs. I like chicken wings because I feel like they're juicier and you get the nice skin on it too. Now we want to mix the flour all over so it covers the entire part of the chicken. Now the steps go like this. First rub into the flour and then you mix it into the egg, make it nice and wet with the egg. And then you put the breadcrumbs on. Now I kind of messed up the steps and I forgot the seasoning. You're supposed to put the seasoning onto the raw chicken. So I like to use garlic powder, herbs and salt. Usually I would put that directly onto the raw chicken, but I forgot this time because it's been a while since I made it. And I had to add the seasoning on during the egging stage. Next you have the bread crumbing stage, just rub all of the bread crumbs all over the egged chicken so it sticks and you've got even coverage. And then place it into your air fryer, you don't need to put any oil or anything. And then I like to put it at 200 degrees centius, celsius or centigrade, I forgot what C stands for. 200 degrees C for about 20 minutes. And after about 10 minutes, you want to take it out and flip it over so you cook the other side evenly. And that is how you make perfect crispy fried chicken, better than KFC and also probably healthier and cheaper.